Hello everyone, welcome back to the mechanical vibration tutorial. Today we are going to finish the example we had in the previous tutorials, which is on the two degree of freedom systems. In this session, we are going to find the response of the system. As you may remember before, we knew how to find the frequencies of the system and the mode shapes or, uh, you know, modal vectors. Now we want to use them to find the time response of the system. So let's begin. So to see what we had before, I put the example here. Previously, we want to find the natural frequencies and mode shapes of the system shown in the figure. And we knew that M1 is equal to M, M2, 2M. We had K1 equal to K and K2 equal to 2K. Now we want to find the response of the system. And as you see, the values for K and M are given. Also, we have the initial conditions. So the initial displacement M1 and M2 are given for us. So as you see, for this case, X1 at 0 is equal to 1 and X2 at 0 is equal to minus 1. And the initial velocities are 0. So X.1 equal to 0 and X.2 is also equal to 0. So in fact, there is no you know uh, initial velocity this boundary or initial condition means that m1 has pushed down for say for example one unit and m2 moved upward for minus one or in fact one and in the negative direction so as you see x1 and x2 the positive direction is uh, downward so it seems that m1 was pushed downward and m2 was pushed upward and then the system is released to start the vibration of the system so as you may remember from before and i don't want to go through the details we have the equation of motion here we have two equations m1 x double dot one uh, as you remember plus k1 plus k2 times x1 minus k2 x2 equal to zero right this is uh, uh, the first one and the second one is actually m2 x double dot 2 plus uh, k2 x2 minus k2 x1 equal to 0. So I'm gonna basically uh, put the different uh, sort of name for this equation. So I'm gonna use equation 1 here. So keep that mind, equation 1, because in the future I'm gonna refer to these two equations. So as you again, uh, as you may remember, we basically I use the matrix representation and we use the x basically x i t equal to x i uh, cos omega t plus phi some general definitions where i is changing from one and two and we basically use this definition into the matrix format and to find the you know the determinant of the equation and so basically, if we plug in this uh, to, to the matrix format we had before, and we ended up into this determinant to set equal to zero, which was minus omega one, or let's say omega, and then we have omega one and omega two. So we had omega, and then uh, we have basically M one, omega squared M one plus K one plus K two, uh, right as you remember minus k2 and then we have minus k2 here and minus omega squared m2 right plus k2 equal to zero so we set this determinant equal to zero and we end up to the characteristics equation which is omega to the power of four uh, minus k1 plus k2 divided by m1 plus k2 divided by m2 omega squared plus k1 k2 m1 m2 equal to zero so from that we can basically find omega 1 uh, squared and omega 2 squared right the roots of this equation and then we can find the natural frequencies of the system i'm sure that you could remember that from before because we did all these steps and we found omega 1 and omega 2 right and then uh, we define the mode shapes basically mode shapes so we have mode shapes here and for the mode shapes 
we had these modal vectors so we had x for the first mode we used the superscript one which was basically x11 and these are all amplitudes and x21 the amplitudes of the first mode and then we have x2 the second mode shape which we have x12 and we have x22 right and then we uh, you know defined r basically r was our ratios so we had r1 uh, which is x1 x21 divided by x11 and then we had r2 x22 for the second mode shape divided by x12 right these are the ratios or amplitude ratios so if we use these definitions we get basically uh, what we have here we can simply instead of x22 and x21 we use the relationship between r and x1 so we have x11 right and then r1 x11 so everything is based on x1 now right and we have x12 divided by r2 x12 so by this definition we can simplify our equation and uh, as you may remember we could uh, you know plug in these two equations into equation one so that's why i use equation one here so if you use these two into equations uh, like equations of motion and simplify that we can find r1 and r2 so and you remember we had two expressions or two definitions for r1 and r2 and both of them would work for us so r1 if you may remember is uh, equal to say for example k2 divided by uh, minus m2 omega 1 squared plus k2 and for r2 we can have a similar relationship but using the second frequency we have omega squared plus k2 right so these are the things that we found before and as you remember uh, both r1 and r2 were found you know with detailed calculations in the previous tutorial so if you don't remember just go back and you can simply find you know how we we basically derive these two expressions for r1 and r2 right so now after uh, whatever we did so far which is basically a review of the steps we took in the past two tutorials now we want to find the response of the system so as you remember and i insisted on this uh, important note before the response or the solution of the system is the combination of two mode shapes and or is the combination of the responses for each mode shape right so that's why the time response of the system that we're looking for is x 1 t is the combination of what we have from the first mode which is x 1 1 right cos omega 1 t and why omega 1 because it's the first mode shape plus phi 1 and whatever we have from the second mode shape which is x 1 2 time cos omega 2 t plus phi 2 right so as you see uh, we have two mode shapes appearing in the response of the first mass and for the second mass same thing we have x21 times cos omega 2t plus phi 1 or in fact it's actually omega 1 i have to change it to omega 1 and plus x22 cos omega 2t plus phi 2 right and we can you know basically simplify it instead of x21 and x22 we use the relationship between x1 and r and you know what we have before so we have x2t equal to r1 x1 1 right this is r uh, cos omega 1t plus phi 1 plus uh, x uh, in fact it's r or let me write that again so we have uh, plus 
r2 x1 2 cos omega 2 t plus phi 2. These are the two responses of the system. So now if you look at these uh, equations, uh, we have four unknowns, right? With the values we had, we could find R1, R2, and I'm going to do that again, omega 1 and omega 2. And in this equation, so this is the uh, equation for the first mass, this one is for the second mass. Here we have omega 1 and omega 2, and phi 1 and phi 2 are unknown, so I use a cross for them. So these two are also unknown. So what are the uh, basically unknown values or unknown parameters? So uh, the known parameters are basically omega 1, omega 2, and R1 and R2. Right? These are the things that we calculated before. And I'm going to do that again. And what are the unknowns? Based on these two equations, x11, right? x12, then we have phi1 and phi2, right? Because as you see, we have x11 here, x12 here. Same thing in the above equation, only we have a, you know, the ratio r1 and r2. And the phi 1 and phi 2 are unknown in the two, uh, you know, equations. And one thing that we know from the problem, we have four initial conditions, right? So we have four equations, four unknowns and four known values. So we can use that to find these four unknowns, right? Makes sense. So, uh, to do this, let's uh, first start with the calculation of omega 1 and omega 2. So, we found omega 1 squared equal to uh, 2 minus square root of 3, k over m. We had omega 2 squared 2 plus square root of 3, km. We had, we have also found the relationship for, you know, r1 and r2. So basically, uh, if we plug in the values for k and m here, like 1000 and you know 20, we find uh, omega 1 as, so we can simply do the calculation, like it's 2 minus the square root of 3 times 1000 divided by 20, which is equal to basically uh, 3.66 radian per second. So we did the calculation for this case. We could do the same thing for the other one. And this one, we're gonna find 13.66 uh, radian per second. So as you see, there's a huge difference between the two frequencies. And we, we always know that omega one and omega two are uh, basically, uh, omega one is greater than omega two. And I uh, forgot to mention that uh, I took the uh, like the whole calculation and so this is uh, basically this one squared and this one squared so let me uh, rewrite it again so this is the calculation for omega squared and I have to basically write them as omega 1 and omega 2 or the final value for omega 1 and omega 2 so omega 1 is gonna be 3.66 radian per second and omega 2 would be 13.66 radian per second sorry i just made a mistake here and now when we have omega 1 and omega 2 we can calculate r1 say for example it's equal to k2 divided by minus m uh, 2 omega 1 square plus k2 so we can simply find r1 which is 1.366 and no dimension and for r2 we only use omega 2 here so here we use omega 2 and we can calculate r2 as minus 0. Point, so minus 0. 0.366 so in fact uh, we could basically uh, do the calculation and as you see one of them is positive and the other one is negative and I explained how it works when 
system is in the first mode, the two masses go in the same direction, while in the second mode, they go in the opposite direction because of this negative sign, right? So uh, now we have whatever we need to calculate for the unknowns. Uh, and we showed you that there is a like four known values. So let's let's see what we have here. So for x1 uh, at zero, we have x1 1 cos omega 1 t plus phi 1 and omega 1 t is zero. So because we are plugging zero here, so why don't I just remove it here and then we have the phi 1 and plus we have x 1 2 cos phi 2 right now uh, I just uh, set t equal to 0 for x 2 at 0 we have r 1 x 1 1 cos phi 1 plus r 2 x 1 2 times cos phi 2 right so these are two equations the next equation that we're gonna use is for the uh, velocity so we need to find x dot 1 at 0 which is you know when we take the derivative we only we have like one omega coming out so we have minus you know omega 1 x 1 1 and sine of you know uh, omega t whatever which we set t equal to zero sine phi one minus uh, omega two x one two sine phi two and x dot two at zero is equal to minus omega one r one x one one cos uh, phi one minus omega 2 r2 x1 2 sine phi 2 right so i put phi 2 into the brackets here but it doesn't have to be but it's okay so now let's look at these four equations and what we have here we have x1 equal to 1 x2 is oh sorry these are actually x x values so no dot here and then we have x2 at 0 equal to minus 1. So we have x dot 1 and x dot 2 at 0 equal to 0. So if we look at these four equations, we have four knowns right here. And we have four equations. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how can... We use these four equations we just need to plug in these values there and simplify for the unknown parameters which are x11 and x12 see we have them here all appearing and phi1 and phi2 so four equations for unknowns you can further simplify these equations like for example you can power uh, these expressions sum them up and try to simplify but for simplicity, we have a, you know, a formula based on our reference, the Rao book, which has simplified these four equations for us to end up to uh, like four explicit expressions to find x11, x12, phi1, and phi2. And this is actually here. I took it from our textbook, like the textbook, which is our reference. They calculate uh, basically for, uh, you know, x11 and x12. And or uh, there are different methods you can apply uh, even if uh, you don't want to directly plug in you know uh, the initial conditions and simplify that uh, you could basically use these four equations here so we have these four equations for x11 x12 phi1 and phi2 which is based on our initial condition so let's take a look at closer look at this equation so as you see here in this equation we have r2 minus r1 x1 at 0 x2 at 0 and also velocity is here and everything is known here same thing for x1 2 we have the explicit explicit expressions which is found from you know simplifying for initial conditions and uh, uh, 
and for phi one and phi two we also have these two expressions right so we i, I just want to stop for a moment at these four equations so these are basically generic you know equations or uh, these are derived from the general solution of a 2d graph freedom system so you can apply your initial conditions into these four equations for any system right so as long as you find the values of r1 r2 omega 1 omega 2 and you have four initial conditions two displacements and two velocities we can plug them into these you know <laughs> four equations uh, which are based on the initial conditions uh, frequencies r2 and r1 then you can simply find you know the values for x11 x12 phi1 and phi2 so if we do the, do so and this is what i did before and you can double check basically we can simply calculate the values that we're looking for so for x11 after you know applying initial conditions in the four previous equations so x11 which is the first unknown we have is equal to minus 0.3 six six and uh, the unit is probably meter because we everything was met, met, metric and we have x12 the amplitude for the second mode is equal to minus one three six six for phi one and phi two if we plug in the values we get zero and if you go back and check you see that uh, that uh, tan inverse is like the tan inverse of zero which gives us zero right so after that, we can plug in these two or these four found, you know, values into our uh, general, you know, response equations. So we have x1 t, we have x11, which is minus 0, 0.366 cos omega 1 t and omega 1, we found it as 3.660 t and phi 1 is 0 plus uh, uh, like x one two which is also minus 1.3866 cos omega 2 which is 1 uh, or 13.66 t and phi 2 is equal to 0 and x 2 t is equal to r1 x11 right which gives us minus half cos uh, 3. 6 6 omega 1 t and mm, plus r 2 x 1 2 which is plus uh, half cos 13.66 t so we can double check my, my calculation or uh, maybe there, there are some mistakes or so but uh, it doesn't matter what we know that we know the values of x 1 1 x 1 2 r1 r2 omega 1 and omega 2 phi 1 and phi 2 as well so we can plug it into our you know final equation to find the response of the system and as you see we we got this as the combination of two mode shapes and when we look at the first mode shape as you see we have uh, they, ha they have basically for the two systems they have similar sign here which means they are in the same direction and for the second mode they are the opposite but uh, like overall the response is the summation of the two systems so we could uh, actually find the response of the system based on what we had before so as i said the 2d graph freedom system need a lot of you know steps and calculation but the process is pretty standard once you derive the equations of motions then you need to set it into a matrix format then you find the characteristic you know uh, equation from the determinant of the you know uh, the coefficients and then after having the determinant set equal to zero and finding the frequencies like uh, two natural frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 we can find mode shapes and then r1 and r2 and from that you need to basically plug those values into our like uh, final equations i showed before the four equations to find all unknowns and then put it back into our you know final uh, representation of the response of the system which is the summation of the two uh, mode shapes and then uh, this can be applied to any any 2d graph freedom system i would say as long as you find the you know equations of motions properly the rest is pretty straightforward 
Maybe in finding the roots of the characteristic equation, you need to deal with a more complicated case, but uh, you'd see in the future examples that it's not that complicated, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And uh, in the future videos, we are going to solve more examples of 2D graph rhythm systems. And we want to move a little bit faster on that, on those examples, because we already knew how to apply this process in details. So thank you very much and uh, stay tuned for the next videos.